Hello, I'm Togali Fajou and welcome to this presentation on curlfunctions.jl, uh, machine learning curls for Julia. This is a uh, joint work with more people in the Julia Gaussian Processes uh, organization. So, uh, maybe start with a bit of theory. Um, let's start with linear regression, which is a model that most people know. Um, you have some output y, some input x, and you have some weights w. And you just multiply x by w and you get your output. And this way we can actually find automatically what are the optimal weights. We don't consider regularization or anything here. So this, we do this, it works pretty well, we're happy. Now what if we have a quadratic case? Well, one solution would be to work with a polynomial, right? So what we would do is that we would create a feature map, a phi, and add x squared to our, to our data. And now it becomes uh, the same problem. We have w which now is a bit bigger. Uh, and we just need to compute this transpose. And again, we know the exact solution very easily, um, which is this. Okay, but now what if we have something extremely complicated? Well, we could actually create an infinitely complex map, uh, but then computing this optimal um, W star would become very expensive. So in turn, we, use, we do what we call the kernel trick. So we assume that the dot product between two feature maps can be implicitly computed by another function without having to compute explicitly uh, this maps phi. And this is a very, very rough introduction to kernel methods and there is much more, especially there's a whole theory about reproducing Hilbert, reproducing kernel Hilbert space, but I don't want to go so much into detail. I just want you to give back. Kernels allow you to work in um, with feature maps with higher dimensions and allows you to work with nonlinear uh, kind of problems. Um, here's like a couple of examples of what kernels are. So one of the most popular one is a square exponential one. Um, we have the Matten one, which tends to have like flatter tails, the polynomial kernel, or the periodic kernel. So for them, for some of them, the feature map is actually infinite dimensional, and for others, it's actually just um, the one you would imagine. For example, for the polynomial kernel, it's just x tilde power of d. So Kernel, met, kernel functions have a lot of applications. One of them is, of course, kernel retrogression, which is kind of the one I introduced so far. Uh, and its Bayesian counterpart would be Gaussian processes. We can do um, PCA with a kernel method, which allows you to work with um, nonlinear kind of features, uh, support vector machine for classification, and more recent uh, advances like Stein's method to approximate a certain distribution via particles and the particles are interacting with each other via these kernel functions. Okay, so why did we decide to create this package? Well, the thing is, every Gaussian process package or other type of packages was basically implementing its own kernel library, which seemed a bit of uh, redundancy. So we had also one package called mlkernels.jl, which had really good standards and was a pretty good package, but it was lacking really big features Automatic differentiation was one of them. Uh, be able to compo make composition of kernels. I'm going to come back to this. Um, the computations were not always optimal. Anyway, this is really uh, this package kernel functions was really the um, first step in trying to make a unified framework for Gaussian processes and kernel methods in general. So, for example, let me give you some things we can do with kernels. Um, if you sum two kernels, you get a kernel. So we can overload the plus operator from base. Uh, a product of a kernel is a kernel. Again, we can overload some as a multiply operator. Um, what else we did is that usually in most kernels you would get um, some kind of parameters. For example, for the square exponential, it always comes with this row, which is a length scale. And this row basically gives you um, a notion of distance between points. Um, and Instead of having every kernel possessing its own parameters, we decided to make a more generic approach and basically transform the inputs beforehand and eventually get equivalences between uh, this transformation and some classical kernel. So for example, to get the same result as this kernel, we just transform it with one of a row. So every input will be multiplied by one of a row and um, you'll get the same behavior. But 
the biggest advantage of this approach is that you can now have extremely complex transformation and still everything would be compatible. So for example, you could actually uh, use a deep neural network, uh, this is called deep kernel learning, and, uh, and pass it to your transformation. So here, for example, I'm using a, a chain from, uh, from Flux and this would just work right away. Uh, we add uh, also additional features like uh, be able to get directly special metric structures, so positive definite matrices from pdmass.jl, Kronecker structures, uh, if you are in a grid, for example, you can save a lot of computations. And we are now progressively adding more and more features to make things uh, more smoothly. Uh, before going into a demo, like this packet has still some issues, especially with uh, automatic differentiation, where some operations are not the best possible. Um, but we are hardly working on this. So I wanted to make a short demo on uh, via Pluto because it's gaining a lot of momentum these days. Um, what I did is I just basically uh, get some data here and I use my favorite toy function which is sync sin of, of x over x and put some noise. Um, and now I'm just defining a kernel and here I'm just putting in the optimal solution, uh, the prediction for the optimal solution. So I just predict on some test data which is just some linear data uh, my optimal solution. Um, and now I just define like a couple of kernels that we can try to see what happens. So here is my prediction and here is a kernel matrix. So it's basically the correlation between each of the points of my test set. So you see that if you're in the middle, you get a really high correlation. If you're really far, since they're sorted, if you're really far, you have no correlation. And for example, uh, here I'm uh, having this kernel, which has some uh, multiplicative uh, variance at the beginning and has this one over row I defined before. So if I grow row, you see that everything is basically very correlated and that in my prediction, everything is so correlated that I'm completely underfitting. On the other hand, if I am getting too small, I'm completely overfitting and you see that there is no correlation anymore. So you can actually find optimal parameters by using loss function and that's the whole point of having automatic differentiation working for these kind of problems. So here lambda would be my uh, normalization constant, my regularization. Um, and if I try to use a different kernel, uh, for example, parodic kernel, uh, here you see that uh, this would become, you get like this um, periodicity happening directly in the data. And we get now again, uh, as a prediction, a periodic function. Um, of course, we could use something a bit more simpler, like a polynomial kernel, and we would get something here, uh, a polynomial of degree 3. So kernels are very powerful, and we hope that we made a package which would be, make them accessible for everyone. Thanks for your attention.